Welcome to the Media Composer <laughs> Room, avid media composer at the Red User Group. My name is Michael Krulik. This is Casey Richards. We're both product specialists for Avid Technology, so we're here to help answer questions and show you some of the new technology. We also have Michael Shooter from the Burbank office and Vincent Mazza. So uh, just to get a show of hands, who uh, is currently using Media Composer? Great. Great. Who's currently using Media Composer version 5? Even better. All right. Who's using older versions of Media Composer? Who's using other systems? <laughs> That's okay. It's uh, good. You're going to see some really cool stuff. I mean, you can work with some of the footage you have now in uh, systems like Final Cut. We can uh, see that inside of Media Composer. Uh, the interface you know, normally doesn't look like this. It's a little <laughs> stretched because of the monitor, so bear with us. You'll get a general idea of how the system works. But this is Media Composer version 5. We are running off of the uh, a new MacBook Pro. Uh, actually, not the latest, but uh, it is a 17-inch MacBook Pro. We do run on Mac or PC. And with version 5, we've uh, added some new features, which is definitely going to help your workflow. I'm going to highlight a little bit of it. We're not going to go into a lot of the features because we want to talk about RED. We are here for the RED user group. But in lines with uh, RED and how we work with it, there's a feature called AMA, which is Avid Media Access. That's what it stands for. And AMA is a feature we've had before, but it basically linked to uh, XDCAM and P2 media. But we've extended, that func extended the functionality to go to uh, QuickTime, any version of QuickTime, so anything you can play in QuickTime Player, H.264, uh, DNX HD, even ProRes. I think some of you know that format. Um, any of the DSLR camera formats uh, from Canon, so 7D and 5D, and also going to RED and the RED RAW files. And there's some unique functionality with the RED that's different than any other uh, AMA file formats that we see. So under File, you see Link to AMA Volume and Link to AMA File. So there's two different elements here because you can navigate directly to a specific file you're trying to link to, or the volume lets you choose folders. Now when you shoot on P2, when you shoot XD cam, uh, when you shoot even RED, what you generate is a certain folder structure. So if we take a look at these folder structures in, uh, let me go to Spotlight. We'll see inside of this AMA media folder, if you can, you see ProRes, we just have some QuickTime uh, movie files. In red, you have your RDC and your R3D files. You have your Canon formats, and you have your XD cam. So it's very specific, or very, uh, you're required to keep this format to get AMA to work properly, if you are coming from these different formats. The nice thing with XD cam, is you can shoot a low-res proxy along with a high-res media, and you can link and switch back and forth to save space, depending on how you're uh, using it. It's a really great workflow. But on you the do same timeline? You can they, have them both on the same timeline? They can all be mixed in the same timeline. And that's a feature that we introduced in version 4, which is mix and matching of formats. So any format, any frame rate can go into a timeline without getting errors or the wrong format window. So really nice features there. Um, so uh, looking at the folder structure here, the great thing about the folder structure is you can name these folders as long as you maintain the formatting. They can be a scene, it can be a time of a day, it can be any format. So if I go into link to AMA volume under the file menu, I can choose a root folder. We'll go to AMA media and again under AMA media I have these folders. And when I choose that folder, it's going to give me the option to, in a single bin, based on the selected folder, it's going to take all of those clips and put them into one bin. Or what I have selected here is a bin based on subfolder names. So once I select that, what you'll see is multiple bins based on the names of the folders, and each yellow element here is a linked file. 
no more importing. So I can click on the 7D, and this is playing back the 7D media. Speak, set, and action. Without having to do an import. The beautiful thing about AMA is I can link to the file, I can look at the file, I can edit the file, and then decide what elements I want to take and maybe create an Avid Media file folder to maybe move it off. But I don't have to wait that half a day to get it in, even to just take a look at the media inside of Media Composer. It all depends on how you want to work. If you're on a laptop, if you're on a system with local storage, if you're on a system with shared uh, media, like a Unity. So a lot of great tools here. So that was the uh, Canon footage, the ProRes media, again, linking to that. Here we have, you'll see in the video column, nothing up my sleeve, it's not hidden, it's not fake. We are looking at ProRes 422 HQ. So it brings over that data information, we click on that, and here's the ProRes media. Speed. got it, marker. And the question came up about mixing and matching. So if I create a new sequence, we just mark an in and an out. We drop that into a sequence. And then we'll take one of the Canon files. We'll drop that in. You can see I'm mixing and matching. That's the ProRes. That's the Canon. And I can play it back yep. without a problem. Yes? So what happens if, uh, if uh, for instance, my understanding is that the Canon shoot 30 frames, uh, and then you have some uh, some red footage which was shot uh, 24, mm -hmm. and I don't know, there's something that they shot 60i to do some slow motion. At, at the end, you you can ask the system just output everything in in one uh, uh, time base or. The, what would have to happen is, and it was a, a question was about mixing and matching. If you get something in one frame rate and you want to mix it in another one, when you output it, will it do it? Uh, will it send it out? Well, depending on how you're working. When you drop in something in a different format, we put a motion adapter on it. So when you're working immediately in the timeline, it's going to interpolate the frames to fit to the project format that you've selected. So you can get a play out. Now, depending on the type of frame rate, you might see some stuttering, but you can go back in and adjust using the, uh, in the effect tool to use blended interpolated, use any of the interpolation modes that you have in a time warp, and you can even promote it to an advanced time warp to do fluid motion or even have more control to in introduce interlacing or a progressive format to change it. When you do want to output it, you will have to render it most likely to a format to get a full play out. Because again, as you start introducing different formats, you may get halfway down your sequence and all of a sudden you see a stutter. Mm -hmm. So I always would render everything anyway just to be assured that I'm going to get a clean play out from the system. But again, being able to do this is, is huge to drop all of this in. Uh, 